जरा डोर बंद करो ना सर्दी ठंडी हवा आ रही मेरे Assalamu alaikum everyone shall we begin okay uh, today we will do the third uh, non detail story which is included in your portion the medal okay so join me on page number 103 the medal a, a short story by uh, bibhuti bhushan bandopadhyay a bengali writer uh, he was uh, born in bengal his father died when he was very young he spent his childhood and teenage in extreme poverty yet he completed his ba with distinction and started working as a teacher he wrote many short stories novels travel diaries etc that won him national and international awards some of his novels were made into movies okay so this is the uh, short background of the story the medal the medal is a short story that fills the reader with a sense of fear and suspense okay yeah page number 103 almost 4 years have passed since the incident took place sometimes i feel it was a dream but then i realize i did experience it and it would be wrong for me to dismiss it as an illusion i have led a most ordinary life the monotonous routine existence of a school teacher that day while i was teaching class 4 i noticed kamakya struggling to snatch something from sudhir's hand when i scolded him kamakya said that he merely wanted to look at the medal sudhir had i presumed it was an ordinary medal which sudhir had won in his locality i gave the boys a long lecture on friendship i asked sudhir to bring the medal to me so the the narrate the narrator is the writer himself he seems to be narrating an experience that uh, he had Uh, some time in the past when he was uh, in one of his class he says uh, now when i think about it sometimes it appears to me as if it was it was a dream or it was an illusion but then he says when i experienced it myself so very clearly then it can't be a dream it it is a reality and he narrates it to us he says one day while he was in the class he saw two boys you know fighting or arguing over something when he found out what it was uh, he he came to know that it was they were um, kamakya wanted to have a look at at the medal that sudhir had maybe sudhir had one of the medals so uh, not realizing i mean not feeling that the situation was uh, anything important or serious he gave the boys you know a long lecture on friendship now and then he asked sudhir to bring the medal to him this is normally what the teachers do get that medal to me and then the teacher takes the medal and keeps it with him or her takes whatever it is okay it was a big old intricately engraved one on one side there was an imprint of queen victoria in her youth on the other side was inscribed sergeant sb parkins 6th dragon guards 1854 how had sudhir got this medal i asked him and he explained that it belonged to his grandfather an english man had given it to him if he were alive today he would be at least 106 so on finding out sudhir tells him that the medal was actually uh, his grandfather's uh, who was given 
that medal by one Englishman. How had Sudhir got this picture? It was Saturday, and I had decided to go to my village for the weekend. I thought. I would take the medal along to show it to Jetha Musai, one of the village elders. I would return the medal on Monday. So, thinking that, you know, he keeps the medal with himself. Who? Who keeps the medal with himself? The teacher. The teacher. Okay. Now, when the train reached my village, it was five thirty, and by the time I walked the two miles home, it was dark. No one lived in my village home. An old woman from neighborhood came and cooked for me whenever I went there. She told me that Vrindavan, my childhood friend, had also come to spend a fortnight there. I was very pleased to hear this, and I decided to visit him immediately. I thought I would show him the medal too. Vrindavan's house was across the river. As I walked along the bridge. I noticed that the river was in flood. I stood there, watching the river for a long time. It was growing dark. The bats were flapping around. Not a soul was in sight. All of a sudden, there was a strong compulsion within me. A desire to jump into the river. As I stared at the swirling, surging water, the feeling grew stronger. I did not know how to swim. If I jumped in, it would be the end of me. My legs were heavy, and it was not easy to move. So he says, keeping that medal in his pocket, he, you know, he reached his village, and then on reaching home, when he came to know that his childhood friend Vrindavan was also uh, in the village, he decided to meet him. And now he is going to Rindavan's house. On the way, there is a river, uh, a small rivulet, in fact, with a small wooden bridge over it. But that day he noticed that uh, the river was in flood. It was the. Ma'am, what is the meaning of flapping? Meaning of flapping. I didn't get your word, beta. From flapping, flapping around. The bats were flapping around. Miss, see when uh, bats fly, they strike their wings against. Uh, sorry, they strike their wings against one another. So it creates a kind of a, a flapping sound, a mild clapping like sound. Do, उनके दो परों का आपस में एक दूसरे से टकराना creates a kind of sound. Okay. Okay. and there was nobody there it was and the place was totally isolated so he says when he was crossing that bridge suddenly a very strange type of desire you know overtook him he stared at the swirling surging water swirling surging swirling means moving very roughly normally you know uh, when the river is calm the water flows very gently you know it's it just keeps flowing sometimes we don't even see that the water is flowing because rivers don't have tides unlike an ocean okay but when the river is in flood then you know the water is just uh, pushing up and down so that is called swirling surging rising rising with time जैसे पानी का लेवल बढ़ता चले जाता है दैट इज कॉल्ड सर्जिंग वाटर्स सो द रिवर वॉज इन फुल फ्लड एंड स्टूड एट द ब्रिज नॉट नोइंग वाई एंड देर वॉज अडन वेरी स्ट्रेंज डिजायर इन हिम टू जम्प इन टू द रिवर ही न्यू दैट ही कुड नॉट स्विम देन ही थॉट इफ आई जम्प दैट वुड बी द एंड ऑफ मी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द रिवर इज इन फ्लड सो ए पर्सन हुट नो हाउ टू स्विम how can he or uh, how can he manage ma'am not a soul was inside means there was nobody there 
that area, that entire area near the river was uh, totally isolated. Uh, there was nobody there. No, not a soul was seen. Means, no one was there in the area. Bilkul, you know, re- Ma'am, compunction means? Compunction means very strong desire. Ma'am, what is the page number? Page number 104. 104. As I walked towards Vrindavan's house, the urge left me. So he says for some time, he felt as if his legs have become so heavy that he could not move from there. But somehow he managed to pull himself and started walking towards Vrindavan's house. And as soon as he had crossed that bridge, that urge, that desire to jump into the river disappeared. It disappeared as mysteriously as it had occurred. I was puzzled. Why had this strange desire come upon me? Is it because I smoked quite a few cigarettes on the train? Because I had too many cups of tea, I thought, as I increased my pace. Vrindavan was very happy to see me after such a long time. Since it was a hot evening, he suggested that we should go up to the terrace and come downstairs only when the dinner was ready. There was just one room on the terrace. We walked into the room. When again, the strange restlessness gripped me. So when he went on to the terrace of Vrindavan's house, again the same kind of restlessness was there. I asked Vrindavan to get me a glass of water. When he went downstairs, I began to pace the terrace. Pace the terrace means walk back and forth. When sometimes, you know, when you are in a tension, you know, you just keep walking back and forth in some area, some you know, the space. Aage uh, you know, tezi se tehelte rehna, you know, trying to think very hard on something. I was, it was quite dark. My feet turned towards the edge of the terrace. I leaned there over the parapet. Go on, jump. I found myself thinking. It was uncontrollable. So he says when, when Vrindavan went down to get him a glass of water, suddenly there was a strange restlessness, uh, you know, he was feeling. So he started walking, you know, in, uh, in severe tension over the terrace. And then unknowingly, he went near the parapet wall. What is parapet wall? That small wall that is constructed around the terrace. Hmm? That is called the parapet wall. So he went near the parapet wall. And again, the same urge, go, jump. Somebody was telling him from inside. And it was so strong that he could not control it. He felt as if he he just wanted to just jump from there. Come on, let's go in. Mother is sending tea for us. Vrindavan's voice broke into the silence. Why are you standing so close to the parapet wall? He asked me, somewhat surprised. I did not reply. So just then at that moment, Vrindavan comes in and he says, come on, come inside. We'll have tea. By the way, uh, Vrindavan asks him, why were you standing so close to the parapet wall? The writer says, I could not answer him. I did not know myself. We went into the room and continued chatting. A little later, Vrindavan went downstairs to find out how long it would be before dinner was ready. So once again, when Vrindavan went down, he says, it was, it, so after some time, uh, after having tea and all, Vrindavan again went down to know how much time it would be before the dinner was ready. It was quite hot inside the room, so I went out. The, the urge was there again, growing more intense each minute. Now is the time to jump. There isn't anyone to stop me. This is the moment I thought. My brain went numb. 
so again you know as soon as vrindavan uh, went down he because it was hot inside he went on to the terrace and as, as and as soon as he went on to the terrace the same urge of jumping down was back again and the mysterious thing was that that urge the desire to jump was getting stronger each minute minute by minute it was getting stronger now is the time to jump there is anyone there isn't anyone to stop me so somebody something was telling him from inside go there is nobody to stop you now come on move i was startled by a scream it was rindavan he grabbed my shoulders and dragged me away what were you doing i thought you were about to jump if your legs hadn't gone entangled into the ropes so vrindavan just then again vrindavan came and actually the author was he was not conscious of what he was doing and he says i was shocked by the screaming of vrindavan vrindavan came and he literally shouted what are you doing see you were about to fall down if this wire hadn't dry, you know got entangled